to start upcoming school years um, reviews with science. I mean, you guys already know, this is my jam. Science is what I do. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to explore with you today Oak Meadows High School, one of their high school programs, which is environmental science for a changing world. So stick around with me. This is the newest available edition. It was gifted to me in exchange for my honest review, but you guys know I've been with Oak Meadows since like what? You look in me and see that I'm the type of girl you're not really that used to. Welcome back friends if you're brand new to my channel my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company as I said before we are going to do our first deep dive into Oak Meadows high school course one of them that is available is environmental science for a changing world this is for my initial review as you guys know especially with Oak Meadow I come back midway or quarter way down and I'll give you our updated um, review on it and then a final review at the end of the school year so here's my initial review after taking um I want to say a couple months how long have I had this in my hand I don't really know it's been a bit um of diving in and pretty much reading every single page because that's how I do things I don't know anyways if you purchase this from Oak Meadow as a full bundle for the science this is what you will get I have this right here right now I know it looks silly but if I put it down look at that glare it's gonna drive me nuts wait 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 okay oh there okay let's do that all right, so this is what you will get. You will get the course book, which is, this is your student text. You will get your teacher edition, obviously for the teacher. And then it's like, you know, right here, you can tell the difference if you have it like on a stack or anything like that. So it's shaded in for the student text and that will be true with your high school course books and the shaded in for your teacher text. And then this is the spine that they have. As you notice, it's Savas. So I was pretty excited because you guys know I'm very familiar with Savas. I have done a few reviews of um, Savas Middle School and as well as one of their elementary levels. And you can take a look at that. I'll go ahead and link them down below um, if you wanna take a look at those videos. Now that is gonna be a little bit of a different flavor because those have that online components and portion of it because it's strictly from Savas um, and it has that whole entire database. This is not this, friends. Yes, the um, textbook they're using is from Savas. This is um, and it's just one of the sources that they're using as the spine. Um, however, there's no online component of Savas within this course, all right? So that's not what's included here because you're doing it the Oak Meadow way, right? So everything that you're gonna be pulling out from this text is gonna be on your teacher and course book, um, book guides. That's not to say you're not gonna have some helpful links that you'll be able to see on the website. And I'll show you where you can look at helpful curriculum links per le lesson and all that jazz. So you can um, add those elements if you like, but obviously that whole entire database, don't get scared when you say Savas and you're like, oh, I have to do this plus this plus the online. I did try to get the online, um, the online um, component, I was just like, I'll pay for it. I want to do that. But for environmental science, um, for this particular course, not the older one is available. For this particular co course, I call Savas and it's not available for homeschoolers. It's only available for like the teacher license, um, um, not teacher, the school license one. And um, so I couldn't purchase the online portion. Why did I feel like I needed? I don't know. I just wanted to have it. County Almanac uh, with essays of conservation from Round River is also, also comes with the full science bundle. I had this in the stack with my language arts and I forgot to mention this, but this is also comes with the science, not the language arts or with part of the science bundle if you get the complete one. So again, this is a series of astonishing portraits of natural world and it's a sound county. If you look at the website, you are gonna look at the courses a little bit different than what you're used to looking at the lower levels, right? So they're gonna give you that nice little guide of, um, you know, just kind of like an idea of a schedule that you can follow or what um, courses are recommended for what grade. Now, even though certain courses are recommended from um, um, certain grade, with the exception of things that require prerequisite, like some of the fine arts is like, you know, take this first, or, you know, you guys know what prerequisites are. Anywho, um, um, aside from that, let's say you have an 11th grader and they've hit like every advanced science and everything else, and they just want something really meaningful and intentional or whatever, and it's still a high school credit, um, and this is pretty in depth too, 
then I, you know, take a look at this because I feel like you can almost go outside of that recommendation and that's just an individual choice. Look at these courses. Some of them with the ones with the lab component, there is an option. Oh my, I, there. <laughs> there is an option to go ahead and purchase a lab kit as well. Environmental science is not one of the co courses that comes with a lab kit and the labs or kind of like the labs are done in a different way, all right? So this is not one of them that you can get the lab kit. However, and in my honest opinion, I think Oak Meadows High School courses is absolutely, that's where they shine, friends. Their high school courses are just, just awesome like uh obviously we love oak meadow we've been using oak meadow since like first grade but like high school is just my favorite i'm just gonna go ahead and say it there be gone. All, right. all right so the teacher edition that you will receive like i said you could also purchase these separately the table so of contents you're going to see your teacher introduction here you're going to have the on the other book your student introduction and how the course works and how you're going to be able to use it you're going to see some familiarities from the middle school courses that i have been sharing recently and even the lower ones that i shared over an igtv Yes, I still call it IGTV because that's what it was when I started like four years ago. All right, it has 36 lessons. So ideally you can finish this in 36 weeks, but feel free to go at your own pace, fast or slower, however you like to do. This would be worth in the state of Florida. So keep in mind, whatever may change, some credits worth differently um, in other states or other regions. And I think some somebody reached out to me um, after my high school video and said that like the credits like blows their mind because that's not something that they do in their country. So I was like, oh, wow, that must be nice. Um, anywho, but um, this would be worth one credit. And you can see those recommendations in their free worksheet as you're planning high school that they offer. So even if you're not using Oak Metal, take a look at that. That is something that I brought up in my high school planning video. All right, so a matter of perspective, what is environmental science? The tools of environmental science, exploring the ecosystem field activity, economics, environmental policy, earth systems and water cycle, bio, um, bio geochemical cycle, woo, there we go. Population ecolo um, ecology. I don't know why that word is always so hard for me. Evolution of species, um, communities, and eco, oh, no, I'm done. Um, exploration labs, biomes, um, aquatic ecosystems, biodiversity, soundscapes, not gonna say it, human population, there's just certain words. You, you know what, and um, people are surprised sometimes to find out that um, English was not my first language. All right, the environment and health, first semester's wrap up, um, movie week. I think this was a fun twist, I'll show you those things. Natural disasters, um, urbanization, exploring our impact, our precious resources, soil, agriculture, mining, uh, water, the atmosphere, climate change, non-renewable energy, renewable energy, your household energy consumption, waste management, uh, rising to the challenge, and then further inspiration. So you have an appendix that's gonna have some material lists, academics, expectations, original work guidelines, finding reputable sources, citing your sources. This is something you'll see in the English courses in the, um, the middle grades, elements of good writing, the writing process, and work cited. That is all going to be included in there and also in your student's text that will have um, that information for them. Then you have the teacher introduction that basically this is what this is about. For as long as human have existed on earth, we have interacted with and had an impact on the environment. Um, my daughter, like one like, you know, she's a gifted artist, but science is also her thing. And she's very advanced in materials, how to read your textbook. And that is something like, you know, if you're not used to reading a textbook because your kiddo has been doing like, you know, Charlotte Mason type of stuff or whatever it may be, Waldorfy things and, and textbooks is not really in their wheelhouse. This really, um, I, I love how they took the time to say, this is how you read. And sorry, I need to drink or else I'm going to be like, Kh. course is set up. We go into 36 lessons. This is also divided into two different semesters. So ideally, obviously for a high school credit, you would take an entire year of this so you get that full credit. And a half a year would be a 0.5 credit and all that stuff. But if you want to introduce something else in like the other half of the year, um, I mean, it'll be getting a little tricky. You have to like really be conscious of how you would reflect that in your um, 
uh, transcript. However, you can do one semester, maybe start something else afterwards. Just an idea if you kind of just want to mix things up and then come back and finish the second semester. So it is divided into two semesters. Ideally, you would do this over the course of a school year. So you have um, this different section. So it tells you how to read the actual course book, uh, the introduction, the assignments checklist, which I love. That is a planner's little creme de la creme. It's so awesome. I love their checklist because it gives me like these bullet like tch, 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 tch. this is what we're doing and I can quickly input those points into my planner without having to scan the entire course book. Think about it. What does it mean? Comprehension questions, critical thinking questions, activities. What does this matter? Why does this matter? Why can I speak today? Share your work. And then academic expectations um, and so on and our responsibilities. So here, let's take a look at a lesson and then we'll take a look at a lesson in the middle just to give you a little bit of a deep diver. All right, so lesson one, you'll see the lesson over on your left-hand side. Here is your assignment checklist. So on here, I never write on these books. Um, I always pass on my Oak Meadow stuff to another local family or um, even I've shipped one to a friend and stuff like that. So I don't sell them, um, obviously, because, you know, I, I was gifted these um, for my review. So I, um, I don't sell the things that are gifted to me. That's just a thing with me. So I rather just pass it on. So um, obviously with the Kai School course, I'm going to be keeping this for a while. Um, assignment um, checklist on here. So you have answer questions, doing research and meet us. It's just like a little bullet point. Activity, um, it will tell you activity A, activity B, and they're going to have options, right? Um, activity A, activity B, activity C, and it will tell you if that's one that is option or things that you're doing several times. And then you can go ahead and check off. So you can definitely check off your course book and stuff. I tend to not, so I can just, you know, pass it on to somebody and it just looks nice and crisp. All right, so um, here I like how they have like some um, quotes in each of the lessons. Um, I dig that. There's a lot of images more. I mean, no, I think it's about the same as the middle school ones, but there is, there's a good amount of images in your course book, which I think is nice. All right, so on your teacher edition, you are going to see in red what the answers that you're looking for. So it's essentially your answer key. And obviously some things are gonna be varied, right? All right, so this again continues with the introduction. Where in the world are you? Learning objectives. Um, and those are um, spelled out. So as you plan, as you um, facilitate these lessons, even if they're doing a lot of independent work, you're still the teacher friends, right? So especially with an um, Waldorf Inspire that has more of a teacher-led component um, and that collaborative effort, um, to me, I don't care if you're in high school, like you're still gonna have me there at, in some capacity. Can you do a lot of this independent? Yes, because this um, course book starting in grade four for Oak Meadow is written directly to the child. But that doesn't mean you check out, all right? That's my thing, I'm just gonna say it. All right, so here you're gonna have the questions that are asked of the student. And then in the red, it's, um, is it red? No, I think it's like orangey. All right, my eyes are deceiving me. Um, and you're gonna have, if it's something that's just like personally directed, like in what town or city, state or province do you live? Obviously they're not gonna have an answer for that because that's gonna vary. But if it, it's an essay response, they're gonna probably have, or some of the cases they'll have an example of a good um, response. And then some will say answers will vary, but this is what you're looking for. Then you're gonna do, go to the activity. So here, this is what I love. And if you have not seen any of my videos of Oak Meadow before, you have options. It's not just like, okay, this is the assignment. We're gonna do this. And this is how you're gonna return demonstration. It's not, you read the assignment, you do whatever the hands-on, whatever portion of it, or even have options with that. And then you're giving several options to return demonstration. That's how I call it. You return demonstration of that, what the knowledge that you have acquired or what you know what you found important about it or whatever it may be you're given more than one answer um, one option and what that does is that feeds into several different learning styles and it also f gets the kiddos with a some sense of autonomy like my daughter like will never like she will never drop out metal she absolutely loves the fact that she has 
control. She can decide on a research paper. Um, I can do A, B, C, or D, or whatever option. I can do it this way. I can do it in a more artistic assignment. And even outside of that, you can go beyond and be more creative with it and tailor it to your kiddo. This is what's a beautiful thing about Oak Meadow is the ultimate flexibility, even in higher levels and even the higher demand that it has, especially in the middle school. Why does this matter? So this brings the connection to you. So you're not just doing activities, right? You're not just, okay, um, I'm going through the motions and I am telling my kiddo to do this, read that, do that. Why does this matter? What is the connection? What is the personal connection to this? So. What was the point of doing these activities? It's about raising awareness of world around you, both in space and time. Where do we come from as humans? Where are we now? Where are we going? How are my, um, who are my neighbors locally? And you are a very small part of this world, but you are an important part. A little bit of progression. And obviously I'm gonna bring this together as you look at the text. Um, when we look at the student book, then I'm gonna bring the text in. So here, for example, um, this is lesson, this is kind of like midway point, um, lesson 19, assignment checklist. You see they have so many options for their activity and um, exploration labs. So because of the nature of these types of labs, there's just, um, you know, there's not a lab kit um, for it. And it's mostly like high, uh, household items and things like that, that I've seen construct an earth grade proof building, um, you know, and things like that. So you have the learning objectives, you have the reading, and then the reading is going to be, oh my God, this thing is huge. So here, for example, it says read chapter nine. All right, so here would be the correlation with that. This is chapter nine, environmental health, investigate phenomena, and then it will um, paste this textbook for you. So some of us know that I collect textbook like their books, and I just like pulling from different resources and incorporate, even no matter how rich a course is, I feel like there's always some uh, extra nugget that I can just like individualize. So this is this particular chapter, and then it's broken up for you, and it will tell you what page. So you're not reading the entire chapter, you're gonna read, you're not gonna use absolutely every single portion of this um, text, right? So let's get that out there. So this is going to tell you you're going to read page 277 to 283. So that's not a lot, right? And that is, remember that each lesson is written as it's one week, all right? So, um, and then it says, remember your textbooks include skills handbook and appendices are very helpful. This should be the first place to look if you're having trouble with math skill, a graphing skill, or scientific process or understanding diagrams. So all that you will find on in here. So for this um, particular part, that's 277 to 283. So natural disasters, and then you have the knowledge skills, reading strategy and vocabulary. And then you go into, the informational text you have the map it's on here which you would go ahead and do or you know you could choose not to you have vocabularies that is built into here and then you would stop so just you can get a handle of how much reading is in one week you would start right here and here has the assessments that you can do here but you can just go by the assessment that is project you will research and design a model of a building that will hold up during an earthquake. You will then test the building in a um, simulated earthquake and evaluate its effectiveness. Then it goes in through the different phases. So um, this is, you may have done something similar in lower um, levels of school, but it was just like more creative or more, uh, you know, just, I'm not gonna say that this is not fun, but you, it's just more loosey-goosey, right? Um, sometimes there was more of like the, depending on your resource or some of the steps, but here is going to go into the actual like scientific process, right? So the research phase, the construction phase, you know, and um, thinking of it in those different elements. So materials, you can have sugar cubes, stones, paper, carbon, whatever. And then, so I just wanted to mention these things because these are, things that you find in your house normally, right? So um, I wouldn't be scared about like not having a lab kit for this. And then the procedure step-by-step step and the analysis. Then you have the activities um, to go with it and that's the lab portion as well, all right? So you will see this and then share your work. As you can see, this had a lot of um, that point of comprehension type of questions and critical thinking. And then you have further inspirations. 
you have some suggested additional books um, on here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it up because obviously I can't show like you Getting involved much. citizens um, science opportunities that is going to go over. They have some websites um, that the Oak Meadows written is never gonna really be all book work. Oak Meadows is always known to be very hands-on. All right, so um, here you're gonna have in your appendix material list that you can look at it as a whole, right? This is awesome. I love this because um, especially when one that doesn't have a kit because these are just like normal things, you go by the lesson, the assignment, and the materials needed. So that week, they're just gonna need a camera. Here's just need a notebook. And, and it came with a field notes notebook and I didn't show you that. Um, and then um, activity B, option two, and it just goes by all the different options and you're gonna see every single material that you need, right? And then this is an alphabetical list of material and I'll tell you also, um, you know, just like to have on hand, if you're just hyper person that needs to make sure you have everything before the school year starts, hello. <laughs> All right, academic expectations, assign, assignment instructions, delivering your best work, formatting and labeling. Let's go over all that original work guidelines. Um, so they talk about um, plagiarism and things like that. Um, finding reputable sources and citing those sources. This is something some folks forget to teach. Um, and that's okay if you forgot, but this is something that Oak Meadow addresses like really early on. The earliest grade, I remember sixth grade, but maybe it's earlier. I'm, I'm not, I don't call it's been it's all the grades kind of mumble in my head all right so um citing print and it gives you the examples of how you cite citing images um elements of good writing so various sentences you know and then it goes over those um basic elements like declarative imperative and interrogative 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 oh there we go all right four types of sentence construction strong paragraphs all this because writing is still a very major element in their science courses in every Oak Metal science courses. So um, it's writing heavy. However, don't let that scare you because you know all all their courses in middle and up is writing heavy. It, it, it jumps up for you. But don't let that scare you because you can easily um, swap the assignment to make it verbal or make it another pres like a presentation or just discuss it if you feel like your kiddos like burnt out with too much writing um, you can easily change those out so don't let the fact that you hear oh Oak Meadows writing heavy scare you because it's very flexible all right so um so you have all this stuff like on all, all the different types of um, essays and reports and things like that and information right here and then you say oh but my student would need that information yeah, no work. here we go all right so the student text is going to be the copy you saw in your future text without the answers so you're going to have the week and the introductions all the lessons again there you have a 36 week um breakdown over two semesters you have the introduction how the course is set up how to read the textbook all the same information but directed at the student here you have that first lesson that we looked in the at. questions that you saw again there's no answers on here the activities and then the options that they have to pick which activities they would like why does this matter that is still there and sharing your work now let's skip on over All right, the atmosphere so it's a read chapter from 15 these are just like the tag points on the side but then here we'll give you the exact page number. So if you go just and look at the checkbook, a checklist, you may think, oh, I, the kid has to read the whole entire thing, but they don't. This is just so they have, like if they're using a student planner and Oak Meadow offers student planners, I'm gonna tag down below. I, um, I review their parent planner, their homeschool planner, and the student planner, which like, beautifully blends in with Oak Meadow, but in anything, um, even if you're a blender like we are, um, and they can put these tag points right into their planner and just, or maybe they don't like using a planner and this is their planner right there for the week. That's fun. That's fine. That's cool. That's cool. Um, but if they have it in a planner, they don't have to open each course book to find out what they have to do. Um, so they can put that there, but remember that the actual page numbers are going to be in the actual assignment on here. So you have the learning objectives of reading. And then here you can see read chapter 15. Um, of the atmosphere 451 right, and, 475. and then um, the textbook which I'll show you the breakdown of this is broken up into units so it's chapter and units so chapter 15 page 
451 so it's going obviously the chapter starts with the page art right here but the um, first part is here and this is obviously broken up into lessons so you can space out on here it's just gonna say these are the pages you're gonna have to read so it's up to your child and especially at this stage to pace themselves so I, by the end of the week, I would have had to finish this many pages, these assignments. So they don't want to be still reading on Thursday or Friday because at that point you are actually doing the activities and things like that. So you want to get the reading done towards the beginning of the week and then continue on with um, simultaneously doing the hands-on components, right? Um, so again, this is the how it's broken up here is by the lesson, but you can see how they break it up for you and then what they pull out of it with the hands-on elements and the additional information and the additional skills that they have the kiddos practice so this um, and there's a quick labs too so um, there's labs in your course book but then there's labs here as well that your kiddo may want to try because they're not always gonna be like the same thing on here um, so and there's uh, different information or different things and skills that you can practice that is from the text obviously nothing that is online but there's a lot in here so if you're if you want your kiddo to really do even you know challenge them for whatever reason you can easily do that because there's more that's offered with it what this. does this mean think about it sometime this week when you're riding in the car having dinner with your family share the humorous quotes that are at the beginning of the lesson as well as david Brower, um, brower's thoughts on the need for humor talk together and see if you can come up with several funny quotes about air pollution make a list you're encouraged to submit this list with your work with this lesson for extra credit. So there's extra credit, um, there's extra components at this, and you can see it. I want to show you more of these. Think about it. These are like um, lesson 29 and 30 because they're a little bit beefier, but it's the same topic. Um, and then again, you have to think about it. So you read chapter 16 uh, on your tax. You have not, you know, assignments before you begin. It says, please watch to see this link um, on their curriculum um, links in their website. So if you don't want to have to type all that, just go to the curriculum links um, on the website, which I'll show you right here. You go to the lesson and then there will be there. So like for here, for example, before you begin, they want you to watch a speech from the UN, UN Climate Summit in New York City. And then that will be um, the link there, but you can go on the website and have that clickable link. Comprehension right questions, then another think about it again. So I like these little different points too, because they sent you on um, you know, different avenues. And then you have the control of how much you want them to dig, uh, dig deep, or maybe they're directing this themselves into, okay, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z as well. Um, critical thinking questions are more than your comprehension type of questions. So that is gonna have them thinking and um, going a little bit deeper. Um, and they are gonna be doing like a lot of like the graph readings and things like that. So that's a skill that they do not remember. That is something that is another lab, you know, modeling global air movement. And again, um, you don't have to do um, all the labs and stuff. Um, if that's something that's just, you know, it's a little bit too much, like this one is a little bit more involved. Um, you can just have them concentrate on the activities or maybe just sub it for a video or things like that. But at this level, you want them to do as many labs as possible. But this is a lab that is gonna be pretty involved. Um, and like you can see, this is lab two. that so and then why does it matter and then so there's two different labs for that particular unit um, and that can take them a little bit um, to do so you may want to extend that further or maybe if they knock it out and in, in the same week and yeah you have the same thing for their uh, inspiration and they have some recommended um, resources and books to read that are recommended additional you having them work very independently this is going to be you know their jam because they're gonna um be able to look at exactly what they need so they're also in the driver's seat they are going to have those resource pages about citing right in their course book not just yours it is in your in both books because you are able to assist them without having to get the book away from them so you um you know if something you don't remember is right in their book for you so let's take a look at the textbook which is used as a spine all right so we saw parts of this already. This is the environmental science by Savas. This is divided into units and chapters. Um, 
Oak Meadow is going to paste this textbook for you and don't think that, I mean, this is massive, just like a normal textbook. This is massive. You are not gonna do absolutely every single little thing, all right? Um, so it's um, broken up into introduction. All right, we're gonna try this word. No, I'm not, no, I'm not, I don't know. I just sound silly every single time I try to say it. Humans and the environment, earth resources, towards a sustainable future, and that's the last one. And then you have the appendix with world maps, United States map, metric system, periodic table. All the like extra helps and stuff like that will be in here. Like if they need help with like graphing and things like that or the scientific process, um, all that jazz is gonna be in here. You just have some of the credits and stuff like that. And everything is divided into uh, the unit. Yeah, it's exam uh, example, you have the investigative phenomenon. Um, which is uh, the question that you start each unit with, and that's like typical of Sava's. Why is it important to measure and protect biodiversity? That is a question that you start off and like you can discuss and um, have that as your anchoring point. Um, and then anchoring phenomenon revisit again. So obviously that you go back to that after you finish the unit. And then basically there may have more input once upon what they have learned. Um, okay, so that is that. Then you have online line, um, labs and activities that they um, can look at. Again, you're not gonna have access to everything that is stated on here because that would be in the online component, but you, you can get quite a bit a lot. Um, if you look for like a used copy of the teacher edition because you want to be super extra, I mean, I get it, I'm super extra. Um, it's not gonna be, um, I don't believe this comes printed for the teacher edition anymore. If you see the same course, it's an older copyright. So this is copyright. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. 2021. All right. So that is the latest in this course book. All right. Um, so you have how to um, read this textbook too. And that's something that it goes over with Oak Meadow, the anchoring phenomenon, what that exactly means, the investigative phenomenon, what that exactly means in every day and so on student center experience. And these are nice little introduction that you can do for yourself as well. So um, your kiddo knows what to expect as they're reading a textbook, especially if textbooks is a foreign concept to them. Um, you have some nice little introduction pages here and just kind of a vivid, nice, beautiful, um, il not illustration. Well, there's some illustrations, but um, photographs as well. You have the anchoring phenomenon here. It breaks down the chapters that are in um, that particular unit. So unit one has these three chapters and then it will say go online for that part. That is the part that you, um, depending on what it is, if it is a Savas thing, um, you're not gonna have access to it. If it's something else, you will, all right? Um, so here, for example, you have the breakdown of the chapters on the top of what they're gonna be learning about. And then you have the source text. Um, then it has, you know, go online, take it local, but it's just gonna have some information for you on there. Um, reading strategies and vocabularies. The vocabulary words are going to be highlighted in yellow. Um, and that's something that you can have them keep track of as well. these graphs throughout that they you know may not be used to seeing a lot of. Um, you see a lot of imageries and stuff like that, especially in middle school, but not so much of the scientific type of graphs. Um, and then here you have the map it because with environmental science, there's that strong like geography or relationship to it. So you can easily weave in a geography and you may even, depending how much you have them do with the geography component, may be able to give a half a credit for geography or social studies for the year while you're doing this. Don't quote me on that. Make sure that is legit from where you're from. All right, so um, you have like all kinds of diagrams and things like that. And then there's, you know, assessments at the end. So you have the little mini assessments there. And then you have a study guide. Um, so you have like, you know, basically a cheat sheet on here um, with everything else and then chapter assessment, you know, and then it says defend your case. I like these. These are cool. The central case in this chapter explore how science led to the discovery of how certain chemicals were affecting the ozone layer. Use examples from the central case and throughout the chapter to provide the evidence on how science often relies not only on individuals, but the entire scientific community and beyond to achieve its goals. And then, um, so that's like your defend your case and then review and concepts and turns. 
All right, so again, you're gonna be directed of what the activities and things like that are gonna be, um, you're gonna be doing and some of them correlate to the textbook, some of it does not, it's just strictly an Oak Meadow thing. Um, and then, but you could also look at these individual assignments and see if that's something you want your kiddos Here to do. Here have some quick labs. Um, for example, this is a cost benefit analysis. And, you know, um, Maria finishes a jar of peanut butter while making a sandwich. She starts to rinse out the jar so that she can throw it into the recycling bin. But the remaining peanut butter is quite stuck on the inside of the jar as as more and more water flows down the drain she thinks i know the recycling is important but so is water cons conservation at what point should i just throw this jar in the trash i think that okay so 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 simple but i honestly like these are things that i think about and things like that too and um I think it's really cool that they incorporate these like real life scenarios type of thing that really get you thinking so you tell me, what do you think to that specific question? At what point, as you're continuously trying to get the peanut butter from the bottom, we don't have any peanuts, we have peanut allergies here, but if you continuously trying to get it out, what point is it worth it? I know somebody's gonna pop in here and it's gonna be like, oh, what you do is you put this type of stuff and then it melts out. That's not the question, friends. Just pretend you're a regular folk like everybody else and you're just trying to use the water to get it out. When you hot water, whatever it is. Um, at what point is it worth it? Do you just throw it in the hash? I'm, I'm a recycler, so I'm like, all right, how much water can I be wasting? But maybe I am wasting too much water, who knows? So again, you see, like my wheels are spinning, my wheels are spinning, so I think that's a really cool thing, you know, to get your kiddos really thinking. So you have all those type of critical thinking questions throughout your lessons in the Oak Meadow course book, and then also here as well. So I think that's pretty rad, I love it, right? And then you have the, also uh, a timeline that goes along here for, you know, energy conservation, um, emergency conservation work of act or whatever and you know just to go along the history on timeline as well um so anyways this is the textbook obviously we could be here all day just looking at the textbook um and you know exploring every single little thing there's quite a bit friends let's, let's go towards the end so you have these graph skills so this is something that is a weakness for your child no worries we got you all right so here is what it was referring to in the course book for Earth Meadow, if this is something that they need to practice on. So this is the skills and reference handbook. So you have the math handbook, um, fractions, ratio, and proportions, per um, pro proportions. I got this. Percentages and decimals, exponents, scientific notation, scientific figures, formulas and equations, and conversion factors. So these are things that come into science, um, math skills that come into science, and that is going to keep following them. So um, they have like this cheat sheet and stuff that they can go ahead and practice. Then there's some graph skills, you know, graphs science go hand in hand, reading and study skills, science skills, and obviously the appendices. Appendices. I don't know. All right. So here, for example, this is what this is going to look like. So adding and subtracting fractions is going to give them an example and it's just going to give them a little bit of a verbiage and stuff like that of how to go about it. And again, another example, multiple fractions, ratios and proportions. So that we already went over that. But this is if they need to brush up on those skills, they can do that. And exponents in a little graph right here. Um, so and then you can see it's color graph it. skills, U.S. land, line graph, projections um bar grass so these are things that you want your high schooler to be doing um as they're doing projects labs and um you know different expectations not every single one is going to have some kind of graph but you know so that they know how to do these things concept map flow charts cause and effect diagram so as they're doing presentations and stuff these are like the type of skills that your high school should be if they're not having grasped them then they should be growing into so that they're returning um those reverend uh, demonstration i think this is an awesome like I know a lot of people start with biology and things like that um, in ninth grade um, I also would highly consider instead of doing bio first to do this first you know and really brush off on a global um, you know kind of just a little bit of everything because environmental science is gonna touch on a lot of things you, you know you're gonna touch on health you're gonna touch you know so the um, biology components you're gonna talk uh, touch on earth science you're gonna touch you know you're gonna touch on on different parts you're gonna touch on chemistry you're gonna 
they have like a nice little like review um and then you're going to have all these different concepts that you know you need to like hone in as you're doing lab representations and things like that such in chart and math skills so that go into science right um so i find that this is a really awesome course to do for ninth grade um and if you have an advanced kiddo in science like i do um then maybe even an early credit but you don't need to rush it friends you don't need to rush it so science skills posing questions controlling variables forming operational um def definitions interpreting data again you're really holding into all these type of skills that they should be growing and developing drawing conclusions communicating results evaluating and revisiting and then scientific um, safety information uh, safety symbols are all on world map you have the United States map. The periodic table. I do not miss this at all. <laughs> do you remember having to memorize this? I still do. PTSD. You though. need this plus this. Yes. Do you, can you just do this and don't get this? You wouldn't be doing Oak Meadow Science then. You would be relying only on Savas and without the online component, which is where your teacher stuff is. So if you're going to do environmental science with Oak Meadow, you need all three. All right, I'm not gonna even try to tell you, oh no, you can see the way with the, like, no. <laughs> uh, now the teacher guy is going to have your answer keys, is going to have, now if you feel super, 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 super confident, uh, let's put it this way, with at this level, I feel like we could all, even if science is your jam, we could all use the confirmation of what we're looking for. Obviously, this is going to be the same width, but with the um, addition of your answers on here, um, especially with these comprehension and things like that of what you're looking at. If you're 100% confident that you can figure that out on your own without, uh, if your child is giving you the answer you're looking for, uh, I guess you can do the course book and the spine. Um, to, to me, me, it's higher level science. So, I mean, just just get it. All right. Um, this is something that came in my eighth grade bundle. I think it was part of the eighth grade band. But they have these little oak metal notebooks that you can use as like a field notes. I think they have an actual field notes one too. Um, or you can just use a school mess like we do. Um, notebook for science or one of their main lesson books. I still think they're cool for upper level too because they have such a big space to draw out, but it's just, you, you would need several because um, they don't have that many pages. Um, anyways, if you have any questions, I hope this was helpful and this gave you a, a good feel and walkthrough for this. Um, again, thank you for Oak Meadow for um, continuing to collaborate with me over the years. Um, greatly appreciate it because we're such a fan, so. Thank you so much, friends, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends, and let me know any questions you have or what you thought in the comments down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back, friends. You wrap. What is my name? I don't know anymore.